Hey, Paul, that was always my favorite part of uh, Kant, too, those, those a priori categories of the mind, time and space. Um, and it's interesting, yesterday I was reading about um, how a group of physicists are starting to call the Big Bang Theory into question because of uh, you know the mathematical equations that we use to study what matter would have behaved like um, very shortly after the Big Bang actually occurred it shows us that the Big Bang didn't necessarily have to create time. It could have just been um, a very energetic explosion that occurred within an already existing time space. Um, and you know what is? I don't know what that really changes. I think the general theory that I, the general reason I always liked the theory was just it, it tends to line up with the idea that matter and life. And as a result, mind just evolve uh, towards higher stages of complexity over time, which is what, generally speaking, the Big Bang suggests. And that is the evidence, the empirical evidence that we have. So, you know, it's just an aesthetically pleasing um, theory. And, you know, Occam's razor, the simplest explanation, is the right one. I think uh, that's there's a good example of that with the Big Bang theory. But then these, these other physicists have... Uh, this theory called M theory, which is membrane theory, and, and it's not as aesthetically pleasing at all to me. I mean, maybe that's just because I don't understand the math behind it, but um, just intuitively, it doesn't seem to make as much sense as uh, Big Bang theory. But somehow, I'm just going to explain this to you the way I read it in the article. But it's not like I understand what the fuck they're trying to talk about. Somehow, reality is two membranes that overlap, but that never the walls of each never touch, and in each of those walls is a three-dimensional world. And if they ever um, come into contact or overlap and cross over, it creates this huge release of energy that could have caused our original Big Bang somehow. Um, I don't really know the background to it. I, I haven't read anything else besides that one article, but... Um, you know, I always thought, how do we understand the Big Bang, really? No one understands what the Big Bang could really mean, because if it is the creation of time and space, you know, where do you stand to watch it happen? How do you visualize it? You, you know, you can't, because vision sort of requires a perspective, and a perspective requires space. Um, so from the beginning, the Big Bang Theory has always been more of a metaphor than, than a literal truth. So, you know, even if there are other mathematical possibilities for the creation of the universe. Um, aesthetically, the Big Bang Theory just feels right. I mean, we never could visualize it, but it still feels right somehow. Um, and um, a, a few days ago, I was also listening to um, some lectures by Thomas De Zengo Tita. I'm not sure if you check those out. Um, they're about his book, Mediated, and he talked a lot about oral culture in, in the, these lectures, pre-modern oral culture before print was available and before most people knew how to write or knew the alphabet. Um, because oral people, um, they have no maps of the world. And that means no geographic maps of, of physical places or no intellectual mental maps, conceptual maps of um, of idea, of abstract ideas, so they're always more in the immediate moment, less able to reflect or abstract out of it into other hypothetical situations. Um, so they have less awareness of what's not immediately present. So in a sense, they don't really move around in space. They don't experience themselves as this Cartesian ego navigating a ship uh, around the world. They experience themselves as being united with whatever the place is that they are at. And I think, you know, I was talking about conscience and consciousness the other day. And conscience sort of requires that you carry some sense of guilt with you after you leave a place. But like a pre-modern person, say they do something wrong... You know, they put too many logs in the fire, say, and one of the elders yells at them. 
And in that moment, when they're standing over the, the logs, they feel guilt. And they're like, oh, something wrong has been done here. But then they leave that place, and the guilt stays there, because they don't, they don't take on the guilt and say it was my fault. It was just as much that general place's and situation's fault as it was mine. So, you know, if I'm a pre-modern person, I'm going to leave that fire pit and forget that, I, that anything happened. It's not my fault anymore. Um, whereas a, Cartes a more modern thinker with, with, who has that internal sense of ego is going to leave the fire and carry time with them and say, oh, yeah, it's still my fault. I was still responsible for that.